well folks uh here's the engine and the motor of this uh, pressure washer basically and uh, i pretty much just took it apart and as you can see the different uh, components here we have our um we call this the, the head part of it and uh it's basically a three cylinder head here as you can see and the actual piston and the the rod with the spring loaded pistons here that basically pushes the the cylinders here to produce that uh, pressure as you can see here um this is where the actual pressure happens and the water being pushed out sucked in and pushed out basically in the process the engine body there is the the bearing and the swish plate um, that acts as the camshaft inside here to run those three cylinder pistons uh, pushing them one at a time and the swish plate sort of just uh, uh, wobbles like this that produces the the pushing of the rods one by one um, and of course our motor here the actual electric motor um, that drives everything here. We have a transition mechanism here in this side, which is basically the transmission, if you can call it. It's a one one gear transmission uh, happening here that pushes the rod, pushes the switch plate and the bearings, uh, spins the bearings and the switch plate, and, and, and in turn uh, pushes those rods to create the pressure. So that's kind of the internal system of the, you know, this generic pressure washer and a lot of the pressure washers out there are fairly similar. Some of them are constructed differently where some are made out of um, plastic, which I don't really like. Um, this is the older fashion. Uh, like I said, this has been a 16 year old system and uh, it is, it's, it's amazing actually because it's all made out of metal and um, it's fairly solid in this case um and we do have the pressure switch as well built in on this so that way if it does build up pressure uh then it turns on and uh and, and off i guess uh, there's a pressure in here that shuts off and there's no pressure because of you know you have the the gun squeezed in then the pressure start going again or the water start flowing again so that's where the pressure switch does to do the turn on and off uh the on and off uh, mechanism and uh, here's our inlet and there's our outlet uh, and that's pretty much it guys and I'm going to show you guys exactly what happened here the symptom that I had on this machine uh, as I mentioned on the uh, on, on my community post uh, the pressure washer has been it, it's it's been running it ran okay there's a water flow but there is no pressure like literally no pressure at all it was partly my fault because I ran it not realizing that my water line is frozen because we are still in the towing process here in Calgary. Um, we've been having Chinook here and there. So we're around the uh, one degree Celsius to zero degrees. And uh, yeah, it basically gave out on me. And I'll show you what was broken in the process. It's something probably that you can fix if you have the part and definitely be able to repack this um, this engine block here, technically, and uh, you know use this motor again. But um, yeah, it all depends. That's probably gonna take a while to find the parts. So, anyways, guys, that's how it looks like right now. And then I show you guys what exactly happened there. Here we go, folks. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit here how the transition happens. Uh, there is a gear. Right here, it spins the bigger gear in high, inside here. Uh, there's a bearing here to help it spin in the process to, to prevent some friction going on. Uh, inside here, guys, as you can see, uh, there is this uh, the swish plate that uh, sits inside. Um, you see it's, it's sort of in an angle right now. So as, where's my, little tool here so as you can see guys if i spin the gear here it does um the wobbling effect 
and pushing the rods in the process one rod at a time to create that pressure in the system so that's how it basically works um, so the, the the main problem on this and I'll show you here guys shortly here so there's the plate and then the actual bearing let's see if I can get the bearing out There's the bearing, and then we do have another plate inside. So that's how the bearing sits inside there in an angle, like so. Um, yeah, so. There's another bearing inside there, really, um, in the process, but there's this swish plate that's uh, sitting inside there, guys, as you can see, as it spins. Uh, that's the one that broke. It basically broke in many pieces here, as you can see. So, yeah, that's the equivalent of our camshaft to push those, those rods. And that's the part that broke. Uh, I could possibly find one and replace this uh, whole thing and rebuild this engine um, but um, yeah I can also just upgrade from here because it's been 16 years since I have uh, purchased a, a new one so that's the problem guys this uh, whole engine block here is pretty much done uh, unless I rebuild and find a new part online somewhere so that's how that is basically that's the component of the entire motor of the pressure washer that's pretty much it guys as you can see here too this whole uh block here does contain oil and when i did open this up it's dirty and milky and you know it's basically a sign that there's possibility of the seals are not that great anymore that it's letting in water inside uh, in the process too so that's probably what contributed to the whole explosion of this and so yeah uh, possibly the seals are pretty much done ready um, where's that seal yeah there's this rubber seal here and that's probably leaking in the process as well and um, yeah so far you know the pistons are are in good shape they do move nicely but uh, yeah, that's it guys, it's pretty much done. Um, I, I can show you guys how murky the, uh, the oil is. I've been washing and, and, and cleaning these parts a little bit with, uh, so I'll show you guys that. I've been cleaning the uh, parts with um, brake clean, but as you can see, the oil is just filthy. And uh, you see, there's definitely a remnants of water in there. You can see how, how bad that looks. So there you go, guys. If you are curious on how the, the actual motor and pump um, works and how it looks like, we got our propeller here. To fan the the motor itself to keep it cool, and then uh, here we got our gear, the drive the drive gear, and drives the actual bigger gear here for the swish plate and the bearings to work. That then pushes the rods one by one, and then the piston then you know generates those power from those three cylinder head. 
Um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty neat system, guys, to be honest. Um, it is uh, basically a Chinese-made product, and uh, it's, it's, it's built nicely. I mean, I'm very surprised how this thing lasted this long. Um, I'm sure I can get parts for it, but uh, yeah, you know, great uh, way to dissect the old machine pressure washer here. And I'm glad that uh, I was able to use it for that long and gave me this uh, a little education here that I could share with you guys. Anyways, guys, stay tuned uh, for the new episode on, you know, my new pressure washer coming up and I'll be building a wall mount and I'm not going to say again what it is, what the brand is, but uh, something I can basically mount on the wall in the process. So stay tuned, guys. Until next time, if you do like this video, please press the like button. And uh, if you haven't yet, please subscribe because it does help me quite a bit in, uh, in terms of um, the algorithm here and stuff like that. So please help me out because that's the only way I could uh, definitely keep producing because I'm pretty much doing everything here out of my pocket. And uh, the more help I can, can have, the more hits, the more views, and uh, hopefully I can generate some funds at least to help me out on continuing to do many things in this garage, be it my cars, uh, my GoFar, and the other project cars. So, uh, yeah, thank you again, guys, for all your support. I truly appreciate it, and uh, until next time, peace out.